Today I have a tip instead of a hint for you. Before buying a new graphic card, check if it will fit in your PC's chassis. Or you could end up having to waste more time with changing the case than to install the card. Last time Shinosuke was in some deep duty, demoralized and cornered by both Machine Chaser and Brain. But Kiriko and my man Vegas come to his help. With his finisher he manages to get away, but even if he wasn't killed by Chaser's gun, the neurotoxin is still in his body. Thankfully, of course, there is an ambulance shift car. The ominously named Mad Doctor has a healing type full throttle which saves Shinosuke at the cost of excruciating pain. And because of that, he passes out. Shinosuke wakes up in a hospital, having slept a whole day with belt and brace in plain sight. Hide those things for the love of God! Anyway, the police is about to question Fontar about the explosives. While Shinosuke gets dressed, the belt son starts telling him a story about a scientist whose invention was used for mass destruction instead of the good of mankind. This confirms that belt son's fear is about someone using Drive's power the wrong way. While it was made to fight the rod mutes, it can also cause slowdowns. Belsan says that the scientist of his story was noble, Shinosuke thinks otherwise, but agrees with his reasonment. Back to the bad guys, Crush is pretty much addicted to the explosive and it does not bode well that Shinosuke dropped a pretty big hint about its source. And speaking of the president of the company, there is that interrogation to get to. It isn't going that well for now, the president is silent and Shinosuke is getting pretty intense but the guy from public security arrives and clears the man free to go because the SEU is suspended? The smug bastard gets to go scot-free and reno is shutting down the slowdown radar system? Which makes no fucking sense! And I'm not the only one being angry right now, apparently Crash disappeared alongside something called the Viral Cores. They're the dark shift cars the road mutes use to grow their bodies, and the suggested dose is one at a time. As the president and Crush are getting acquainted, we see that Gen, even while not being formally part of the team, shares in the depression. Before the team bonding turns comically violent, Kiriko intervenes, and on the roof, Shinosuke is confessing his troubled mind to his boss. They were risking their lives to protect a crook. Suddenly, the chief gives our rider the telephone number of the person who brought him to the hospital, and that person is the driver Shinosuke saved the other day, who decided to do his part and be how the fuck did he not recognize the belt? He saw both Shinosuke and drive from up close. How the hell did he see the belt and connect the fucking dots? Okay, nice bonding moment and the driver is in trouble again, but seriously, how the fuck? And again, that thing is the only thing able to track those monsters, even if you suspended the team, why the fuck would you turn it off with those things on the loose? I mean, the only explanation would be if you didn't want... Ah, now I get it. Corrupt cop was into Fontar's wallet, didn't want further investigations into the company, and Rina-san was investigating him, that's why she pretended to be on his side. It's very convoluted and there are more things to say, but fuck it, there's a fight to get to, and of course Machine Chaser is in the way again. Yes, Shinosuke Y, after seeing how corrupt humans can be, he still protects them. His hands were... Cop exist exactly because bad people do it, because of that the good ones they protect are even more precious. It's not about justice or the law or his work, it's about protecting people. Type Wild is here and the difference is visible, it's stronger and more resistant than type speed and since a machine chaser fights from a distance, you know, having a gun and all, it's not exactly advantaged. Even with his own shift car on, Shinosuke just evens the playing field with Rumble Dump, one machine chaser stunned, one crash to go. After finding even more explosive, he's about to give the crook what he deserves when drive on the scene! 
In retaliation, crashes and Derling swallows the three viral cores and uh, transforms into Rider Oya's monster from Ryuki? Well, not really. That was a Cobra, this is a Boa Constrictor. Well, time for Tridoron to transform as well. And wow, this form of Tridoron is pretty heavy. It- Oh, come on, now he's riding the snake? It is Oya! But not for long, since we finally get a tire extension that makes sense. And after a brief demonstration of Type Wild Zor's power, it's time for the finisher! Or maybe not, since the steering sword is not inside Tridoron? Th is the car steering wheel? How is that possible? And why is Rina bringing it to Shinazuka of all people? Anyway, this time the finisher actually fits the name and the car. Crash is down for the count and back in the cave, we discover that Rina was the team mechanic slash secret scientist all along. And while I would personally be more than happy to team up with Rina-san in any way, I can understand Shinosuka's reaction. Enough secrets, bad son! Except he shuts up and Shinosuke storms off. A brief scene about the workers in a newspaper and then episode 7. There is a photographer whistling London's bridge just before a building is observing starts crumbling down in front of his eyes. Back at the SCU we find that this is the third that gets destroyed mysteriously, you know, casualties and they were all built by the same company. While a Vendita hypothesis is pretty strong, there was no trace of density shift particles. Shinosuke is in the office visiting Ayase again and Kiriko is angry at that for some reason. Jealous, maybe? I don't know. More scenes about the SCU not being taken seriously and their budget being cut. It still doesn't make sense. Then we only get to see the end of the hospital visit and another photographer taking shots of Shinosuke and then stalking him. Or detective of course notices and lures him into a trap. His name is Kenta, a reporter trying to get the scoop on Kamen Rider. And no, the driver from the previous episode did not grow a brain and realize who Shinosuke is, nor did the guy here notice Shinosuke wearing the braids on his fucking wrist. He's just following Shinosuke around because the SCU deals with cases out of the ordinary. Shinosuke tries to dissuade Kent out of following him and then gets a call from Gen. The fourth building collapsed. No trace of density shifts here either, but Kent followed Shinosuke to the crime scene. Before Shinosuke can chew him out, a gas explosion happens and surprisingly for Shinosuke, the reporter helps an injured cop instead of taking another photo and then another explosion, this time alongside the appearance of a Roidmune. Then Shinosuke mistakes an helmet for a belt. How? I don't know. Then he transforms and engages the monster, and this time Gen manages to only see his legs, even if Shinosuke attacked the monster right in front of him! Anyway, the monster gets away when Shinosuke is distracted to protect Gen by a falling beam. The Roid Mute can turn things or pieces of it into photographs, a power which Belt Sun manages to connect to the incidents. We're then introduced to who I bet will be Shinosuke's best friend from now on, Burning Solar, the solar-powered shift car which provides a valid excuse to nap in the grass. But Kenta is back again with some information. Kenta tells him about his rival Kusaka, who's been working his way up the newspaper with these surprisingly well-timed photographs, which is why Kenta wants the scoop on Kamen Rider to catch up. Shinosuke wishes him good luck, but a suddenly appearing Kiriko disapproves, and today she seems meaner than usual because of something that happened off screen. Like, really mean! After a brief commentary about this Rodmute's uniqueness from Brain, we get back to the SCU. Kiriko thinks Kenta may be it, Shinosuke disagrees, the nerd confirms that Kusaka managed to take a picture of all four collapses. Which means it's time for an interrogation, with Kenta listening in. All they manage to get out of him is that he has beef with the construction company. Kiriko sets Midnight's shadow on his tail and Kenta reveals himself. Kiriko reluctantly agrees to bring Kenta along on their stakeout, even if she suspects of him still. They arrive at the building where the two reporters' mentor now works as a security guard. As they're introduced, Kenta explains the reason for Kusaka's beef with the Kaishima Construction Company. They were investigating it for negligence and even found some evidence to prove it. For some reason, though, their story was never run. Kusaka's photos were accused of being staged and their mentor took the fall for them, which is why Kenta says that, even if he was the culprit, 
Kusaka would never attack the building where Mr. Yoshida works. And with that, Shinosuke suddenly figures everything out. He says that Kenta actually knew about it all along and wanted him to find out on his own, but then slow down, the camera road mute is back. Kusaka is there too, of course, but it's not the road mute itself, it's just collaborating with it. This road mute feeds on a person's sense of gratification. The more scoops he gets Kusaka, the stronger the road mute becomes. And since for some reason he doesn't transform right off the bat, Shinosuke fails to stop the road mute before he can attack the building. It's fast enough to stop him from completing the job, also thanks to burning solar. But of course, a machine chaser arrives. This bastard's more persistent the nemesis, and he's pretty angry about less time if the ferocity with which he's smacking Shinosuke around is any indication. And after Chaser Spider, this time we see his second shift car, Chaser Cobra, which is a whip, as Drive discovers with his body, an attack strong enough breaks Shinosuke's transformation. Chaser prepares to finish Drive off with a third car, Chaser Bat, but Kiriko steps in between the two. The Shinigami gives just one warning that goes unheeded and then shoots, and of course the episode ends here. Ok, some of my outrage was for comedic effect, of course, but not all of it. I'll be honest with you. I'm really liking Drive so far, they're taking more care about introducing some of the shift cars now, and I like the underlining mystery. But the thing is, the writing completely ignores or makes up stuff to keep the plot on its path. They don't work with them or around them, they just... Uh, Come and go as please. The story remains enjoyable and they're not that big of a headache, nor do they completely ruin the show, but they remain. That nagging feeling in the back of my head that says, dude, these guys just do whatever they want. Fortunately, the results are entertaining. If they were cutting that many corners without at least something to show for it, now I would be really pissed. For now, I'll just be content uh, with pointing them out to you explosively. Aside from that, uh, not much left to say, really. I'm really happy that Vegas keeps on being a presence in the series, small or otherwise. His best shift car as far as I'm concerned. And goddamn it, I want to see the Gaim Drive movie so bad. I'll see you next time, Rider fans. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and let me know your every toe in the comments or on one of my social media accounts. Jenny!